All right, let's uh, look, let's get to it. You know what I I like to uh, look and observe and to see what people are saying. Um, so let's take a look. You'll notice here there's what 50 people here talking about the thousand year reign discussion, or so the title says. I'll put in there priesthood as along the lines of that delegated authority that you know was given from the from the, uh, the Lord. So that's why I put that in there. Versus the system that we live in, which is a democratic system, right? Yeah. But what's going on? That house will not be able to stand because it's not unified. It's not. It's yeah, that's a different kind of rulership. Yeah. And, and where we have the separation of church and state. I think Sister Nancy and you guys and some others have hit hit the nail on the head. Like what Prophetess was talking about. How many kingdoms have been driven by the dollar? Nations. And before long, um, law had to be instituted. They're going to be subject to corruption. Mm -hmm. They're going to be subject to decay. Man, this is good. He was he's already made that. And during that time while he was waiting for his mom to pass, he was given counsel. Oh, because here's the thing, and I'll let him go into it. And, uh, and again, y'all don't have to be on mute, you know, talk back to us. We're not streaming or anything, but but I was like, oh my gosh, it's amazing when God reveals these things to us. Um, because you know, you, we I've heard you know that the Holy Ghost is your counselor, you know, he's the but I'm just my mind was just like wow. Wow, wow. Um, so go ahead and ask the question. I just want to say that because it puts everything into perspective. Yes. You know, so. So what is the role of the Holy Spirit and what is his level of significance in our preparation for the millennial kingdom? All right. So that's a great question. Uh, what is the role of the Holy Ghost in preparation for the millennial kingdom? That's just brilliant. That's just brilliant. So, uh, the problem is there is no millennial kingdom. Might seem like a minor issue, but when the whole basis of your question is flawed, the question is no good. What millennial kingdom? There is none. It's not in the Bible. Where's this coming from? And, I mean, it's astonishing. There is no thousand year reign. I, I just find it incredible that people would continuously talk about a thousand year reign when it's not in the Bible anywhere. It's not here in Revelation 20. What, what are you looking at exactly that makes you think there's a thousand year reign? Are you reading this Bible backwards or something? Years, thousand, reign, Christ. You're just mixing words and saying, oh, thousand year reign of Christ. That's not what Revelation 20 is saying, man. Not at all. It's insanity. Alright, so... I find it incredible, really. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years but the rest of the dead lived not again 
until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. It's incredible. Not one single mention, nothing is implied or suggested that there's a thousand year reign. It's not there. I just read it for you. And you still you're still seeing what? What are you seeing? No mention at all. No suggestion that Jesus Christ reigns a thousand years. In fact, if it did, you'd have to throw out the whole Bible because then that would mean the whole Bible's no good at all. It's pure insanity, if you ask me. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 33, And he shall reign, talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So what, what what's going on here? This says that, but these people are saying it, it's a thousand years. Well, wait a second. If it's a, if it never ends, how can it be a thousand years? And isn't it curious? Did you notice that in verse six? I think it was. Yeah. Yeah, verse 6. That's it. They shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him oops, a thousand years. Why does that sound familiar? What's this say? But ye will be a chosen generation in the thousand years and in a thousand year period you'll be a royal priest no that's not what this is saying at all i mean for dog 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 have you never read this verse did you just not make it that far or did you skip to the end because i know a lot of people they get a new book and they get so anxious and they get so riled up and they get so excited they can't read it they got to go all the way to the end and find out what happens is that what's going on here people going to the end the problem is you go to the end of the book in revelation 20 what are you seeing you're not seeing nothing where's this coming from well i'll tell you where it's coming from it's coming from false teachers people that do not believe in the bible at all and you believed them you don't believe the book that you hold in your hands but you believe them when they teach stuff that's not in the Bible it's incredible what's this say here in 1st Peter chapter 2 verse 9 but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have attained mercy now not later but right 
Now you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Right now. Right now. Therefore, when we go to Revelation 20, and it says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, on such the second death has no power right now. When you are born of the Spirit of God, the second death has no power over you at all. And you are a priest of God. You are a royal priesthood. We are a royal priesthood. We are a peculiar people. We are the holy nation of God. Priest of God and of Christ. And we reign with Christ right now. How can you rightly say that you're saved if Jesus Christ does not reign in your life right now. It's insanity. Now, here's another feller. Jesus, 1,000 year reign, part one. He's got four parts so far. And he doesn't talk at all about what happens at the end. I, you know, I shouldn't say that because I haven't watched two minutes maybe but I can guarantee it I could spend the rest of my life watching these videos and he won't make no mention at all of what happens when Jesus stops raining okay guarantee it now this fella here asks or has a great comment he says the Bible doesn't say Christ reigns a thousand years he's right it doesn't it doesn't say anywhere in fact it says he reigns forever in his kingdom there shall be no end. This guy gets it. He It says we reign with him a thousand years because he lives in us. We abide in him and he abides in us. We're partakers of that resurrection. He has led the way for us. And we that follow him will follow the path that he has made for us, the path to eternal life, which we're on that path right now, and he has resurrected from the dead, and so now we will resurrect from the dead when he returns in the clouds of heaven. He has promised that he will come back for us and excuse me I don't know the Bible somewhere says here if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also Jesus has promised to return for us now when he comes we are changed in the twinkling of an eye in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we are changed forever first the dead in Christ shall rise then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them and so shall we ever be with the Lord that's when he comes in the clouds of heaven. Behold, he cometh with clouds. And therefore, we are resurrected. We are changed just like he resurrected. Just like he changed. Uh, so, <laughs> what are you guys teaching? Have you no understanding at all? Where am I at here? Okay, so we're partakers of his resurrection. He's the first resurrection. And then when he comes back, it's the great day of the Lord. Judgment day. So what is judgment day? It's are you saved or are you not saved? That's it. 
That's the judgment of God. You think of a farmer who has a field and he, and he sows wheat and among the wheat grow tares. Well, he's going to wait until the harvest comes. And when it comes harvest time, he's going to gather together the wheat and put it in his barn. The tares, he's going to bundle up and throw in a fire and burn. That's judgment. The farmer makes the judgment of the wheat. That's good stuff right there. And then of the tares, that's not good. That's no good at all. And he separates them. So also, are we separated, the saved from the unsaved? We are lifted up in the air, and then our enemy is gathered at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise his heel. Jesus is God Almighty. He's going to stomp his heel on the head of the serpent and destroy sin for ever all death all unrighteousness is going to be done away with for ever this is prophesied all through the bible all right this idea of a thousand year reign is not in the bible anywhere what happens when jesus stops reigning can you talk about that a little bit all right when he comes back it's judgment day the end the thousand years is now until he comes back yeah it's a unique time period because this is what the the world that we're living in now this was not how it was before jesus was born before baby jesus okay so now anyone that believes on the lord jesus christ shall be saved now anyone that is born of the spirit of god is the nation of god is the children of god are the people of God we are the Israel we are the holy nation of God if you believe in Christ then are you Abraham's seed let's go to Galatians and make sure I don't screw this up here now the promises to Abraham let's scroll all the way down here now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not into seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now who was the child of Abraham? Jacob, which is Israel. And therefore, we are Israel. Right, it's not rocket science. To Abraham and a seed were the promises made. He saith not and a seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed which is Christ okay it's not rocket science but you got so many false teachers out there who are you gonna believe well how about this believe the Bible that you hold in your hands and believe that it is from God and that it is the perfect pure Word of God in your language because it is if you got a King James Bible if you got an NIV, throw it in the garbage where it belongs. Okay. So great comment right there. I want to see more of this. Really. I want to see people challenging these, I don't want to call them liars. This guy could very well be saved. He very well could be one of us. But this stuff here, he's not getting that from the Bible. He's getting it from false teachers he's echoing what he's heard 
and not what he's reading in the Bible. All right, it's driving me bonkers. All right, okay. Now here's another one. Got questions? This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is brilliant. Here they go four minutes, and they don't say nothing at all. Nothing at all. No, listen to this. Who would be freed from disease? Well, for, first of all, what's going on here? Uh, put your mask on. Muzzle your face. What are you, robbing a bank or something? What's going on here? These two will be fulfilled during the 1,000 year reign. The main purpose of Jesus' 1,000 year reign is to fulfill the prophecies given to Israel and the promises made to Jesus. So, are you talking about 1948 Israel? Because all those people reject the Lord Jesus Christ. They're abomination. They are desolate of the Spirit of God because they reject the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not the Israel of the Old Testament. We that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are the holy nation of God. We are the people of God. Didn't I just show that to you? I mean, look, come on. Sometimes I wonder if people even read the Bible. Let's go back to 1 Peter 2. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God. <laughs> it couldn't be more obvious, man. You're too dedicated to these false teachers that they don't even read the Bible themselves, let alone believe it. Now what's Jesus saying? Let's find out. Yeah, I think he talks a little bit about this. Matthew 21, verse 43. I'm going to read this for you. Let's see. Therefore I say unto you, those that reject him, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. We Christians are the nation of God. It's not 1948 Israel. And that's the impression I'm getting from God Questions. Alright. The nations and the whole earth. God's covenants were voluntary and one-sided. He promised he would bless Israel and restore the world in specific ways. And he will. Now, this is brilliant because what he's talking about, the, the promised land or the hope that we have is in a world where there is no more sin, no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain. There's a world coming that's just like that. And it's not a thousand years. It's forever. Okay? And he will. That answers the question, what is the purpose? He never even answered it. What's the purpose? What? If you go and watch this whole thing, he starts rattling off Old Testament stuff that has no direct relation to, I mean, for, I guess that it's impossible to have any direct relation to a thousand year reign of Christ because the thousand year reign of Christ is not found in the Bible anywhere. Now, I want to go back real quick, and I keep telling myself every day I'm going to try to limit my videos to about five minutes. I'm going to, I want to make quick, short, simple uh, points and end it there. Um, it's, it's just so hard to do. You know, I get to drinking my two cups of coffee. I get all jizzed up, riled up, ready to go. Get all excited and I get to talk and I can't stop. Okay, so if the, this house, it's even hard for me to imagine, but if this there's a thousand year period coming after Jesus comes in the clouds, which doesn't make any sense at all because we go back to Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Jesus is telling us that when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. Okay, so but let's just play along with this. 
you know, Superman fantasy thing, or well, I don't know what you'd call it, zombie doctrine? In this zombie doctrine of a thousand year period of zombies, let's be honest, that's what it is, you're going to have people, and you know, your little story, your little fairy tale, you're going to have people walking around with no heads. Alright. You're going to have people that are um, you know what they're th you're gonna have saved people living with unsaved people you're gonna have people getting marks on their forehead they're gonna get the you know the microchip on their forehead they gonna be walking around with microchips bulging out of their forehead and some people are walking around without a head You're going to have saved people and unsaved people. Yeah, kind of like what we got now, huh? Except, uh, you've, I've heard people say, and I've showed it to you, they're going to be actually people that are changed into their incorruptible, glorified bodies, living among people who are not saved, who are not changed, who are still running around having sex and fornication, adultery and homosexual you know stuff it's insanity man but yet you're going to call it a thousand year of peace a thousand year, <clears throat> excuse me a thousand years of peaceful gay sex is that what it is? I mean I don't get it man I don't thousand years of peace and then it's going to come to an end and no more peace yet no more peace for you and now you take over change everything Jesus Christ he only gives us a, a thousand years which would make the whole entire rest of the Bible uh, a lie because Jesus Christ promises us everlasting life this doesn't make any sense, fellas. This idea of a thousand year reign, it's not here in Revelation 20. <clears throat> it's not supported anywhere in the Bible. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. And when it is the end of the world and the new city of God comes down out of heaven onto the earth, and there's a new heaven and a new earth and there's no more wickedness there's not a thousand years of peace there's peace forever no more pain no more sorrow no more crying no more death all these things will be in the past all right that's it And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Okay, so when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the great day of the Lord. He's going to change everything forever. All right. All of these people, I'm telling you, ask him. Ask him to talk about why does Jesus come and fail to destroy wickedness and talk about this thousand years are there people having gay sex during this thousand years you say it's a thousand years of peace just be honest about it are there unsaved people living during this thousand years after the Lord Jesus Christ comes and just talk about it <clears throat> and then the other part is what happens when he's done reigning so we go back to a world that we're living in right now where people are having gay sex I mean is this all about sex is this what you're trying to delay is this world of sex no, I'm serious about that why would you preach this idea 
that you have a thousand years and what what are you saying that there's a thousand years and it's we're not changed we're not all changed are you saying that some people are not changed in other words are some people not saved if we're all saved what's the point why would that come to an end if we're all saved if we're not all saved after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we're changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye if there's still unsaved people alive then they're still having gay sex and whoremongering and all that sort of stuff right I mean is that what this is about really I'm being serious about this now consider this here where am I at okay love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the Father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world and the world passes away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever the world is pa gonna pass away when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven in the resurrection I told you just hold on now consider what I'm saying here in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage but are as the angels of God in heaven there are not there's no sex the world passes away the lust of the world is gonna be done away with now if that breaks your heart buddy you better check your heart all right no more gay sex for you all right no more whoremongering for you that's gonna be done away with now I'm serious about that now let's go keep all this in mind here in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed the last trumpet that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven we read that in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 right here we go to verse 31 and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet that's the end of the world that's the end of the world when the great sound of a trumpet occurs that is when we are changed in a moment we are changed in the twinkling of an eye we are transformed if you will from our corruptible corrupted bodies into our glorified incorruptible bodies so are you going to say now there's going to be a thousand years where there are still unsaved people living and running around having gay sex and all that sort of stuff why when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven you see that the Sun shall be darkened the moon shall not give her light the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken and this is it it's the end of the world fellas he's gonna make everything new all right we're gonna be lifted up to be with the Lord when this happens we're gonna be changed in a moment in the twinkling of eye we're gonna be changed first the dead in Christ for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God did you notice that the trump of God signifies the end of the world 
And with the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, we in Christ, dead and alive, lifted up, that can only mean the unsaved are at our feet. Now, as we read in Revelation 20, Satan is loosed so that he will gather or dece you know, deceive and gather the unsaved at our feet. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. This is consistent with all, all the whole Bible. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool if I had any memory at all I'd just be able to point to an Old Testament there it is I got that I see that little thing there so somewhere here it's gonna say the same exact thing that we just read here and of course I don't remember nothing can't find it it's gotta be there it's gotta be there it's not there it's not there. I, I think it's 114. I really do. I think I'm way off. I'm wrong about that too. Alright. Oh, goodness sakes. 110. Am I always that far off? Way off. See, this is why I got to read the Bible more. Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool so when we are changed in the in a moment in the twinkling of an eye first the dead in Christ then those of us which are alive to remain are lifted up caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air at the last trumpet this is when we are up in the air and our enemy is gathered at our feet, fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. All right, so we can go to Genesis 3.15 for whatever reason. I remember this one. Someday when I'm old, I might remember Psalm 110, but you know, you never know. Genesis 3, verse 15, I will put enmity between thee, talking to the serpent, that's God, putting enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel that's when Jesus Christ is going to stomp on the serpent's head and destroy all unrighteousness forever that's when we are lifted up in the air to be with the Lord and our enemy is gathered at our feet and they're going to look up and see and they're going to know that God has loved us. God is true and faithful and just. And our enemy in all unrighteousness is going to be destroyed forever. And then we're going to be set back down on earth, a new earth with new heavens. All right, there's going to be no more sin, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more death. And we're not going to be accompanied with homosexuals. That I'm sorry if that if you don't like it, but that's just the way it's going to be. All right, I don't know why. I really do not know why people are preaching a thousand year reign. It's not in Revelation 20. It's not anywhere in the Bible. And people are quick to mention it, but they don't explain it in the full depth detail of what's going on here. I want you to talk about the unsaved zombies, if you will, or whatever, that you believe are going to still be living after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. I want you to talk about that. Be honest. Be serious about it. 
It's a big deal, I think. Now, again, let me end this by saying if I'm not being fair to this guy or got questions or these people, let me know. I don't, you know, I want to be fair above everything. I want to show the truth. I want to show the error. But in all of that, I want to be fair. Okay?